Hello and welcome back to the Oberheim OBX tutorial series. Today we're dealing with the filter bank, but as an aside to that, we're also going to deal with the envelopes because they are inextricably linked. Let's hear what sound we've got at the moment. Nice, simple, brash, easy, sawtooth sound. Let's see what happens when I turn the frequency control down. We're starting to lose upper frequencies. Now this is called a low pass filter or a resonant low pass filter, which means that as I pull this control down, only the low frequencies are being allowed through. And the more I pull the control down, the fewer and fewer uh, high frequencies are retained. We're throwing more and more of the stuff of the sound away. Bring it back in again. Now can you see the angle of this slope? That's a 12 decibels per octave filter, which is quite a gentle filter, which is, quite, which is why it's quite a gentle slope. But the OBXA has two different types of filters. It also has a 24 decibels per octave filter, and we get access to that by pressing this four pole button. Now the number of poles um, dictates how strong the attenuation is, how steep that slope is. A standard default filter, 12 decibels per octave, is a two-pole filter. When we press this button to turn it into a four-pole filter, that's a 24 decibels per octave reduction in amplitude. So whatever the cutoff is, we have a single frequency that's called our cutoff frequency. And from that point onwards, every octave that we go up, we lose an additional 24 decibels of volume to it the attenuation, the drop in volume, gets steeper and steeper and steeper, which is why we end up with this slope. So this slope here is steeper. This little bump is an artifact of the filter circuit, but it's really the slope that we're looking at. Two pole, four pole. Now then, I called this thing a resonant low pass filter, which means that at the cutoff point, we can have this, um, this thing called resonance, or Q, you'll sometimes see it referred to, which is gonna be a bump uh, in the frequency curve. We'll get an, an, an accentuation of frequencies around the cutoff value. Let's see this. If I start increasing the resonance, here it is. This here is the beginning of the resonance spike. get steeper and steeper and now if I change the frequency control you'll hear a classic filter sweep now can you see that did you hear that the the, the sound got louder when I switched to two pole mode in four pole there's actually um, a, a concentration of the filter at the cutoff and frequencies on either side are actually attenuated or reduced in volume. So you get a, a more intense filter. So here's the two pole and the four pole is quieter but more concentrated around the cutoff value. The next control along, mod, stands for modulation. And this is a control that allows us to specify how much of an effect the filter envelope is going to have on the sound. Here is an envelope. This is an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope. What it basically says is that at the beginning of the attack phase, at the start of this envelope, the frequency specified by the control in the filter bank is in total com command of the filter sound. This is where we start our journey, 88 hertz. In other words, an almost complete attenuation of the frequencies. We've thrown almost everything away. Then over a period of time specified by this knob, we get to a point where the frequency control is basically like virtually turned up. And it's the modulation control that specifies how much it's getting turned up by. Let's just hear that before we go any further. And you'll hear the filter coming gradually over a small period of time and then it sticks. Now this value that it sticks at is the sustain level of the, of the filter envelope. So now we're here. 
And if the sustain is set to maximum, it basically means that the filter is having frequency plus this modulation amount, which is an arbitrary additional amount being added to the filter cutoff, the frequency cutoff. Those two things are having a maximal effect as specified by this sustain knob. Here's our filter sweep. Here's our sustain position. If I pull the sustain control back, the filter is once again taken all the way back to our initial starting point. This is our starting point. So if I increase modulation to maximum and have sustain at maximum, the filter will be having no effect. Once again, it's allowing all of the frequencies through. And there we are. So this modulation control in conjunction with the sustain control is allowing us to specify what our resting point is. Once the envelope's finished, what's the resting point? Now there's one part of the story that we haven't dealt with so far, which is decay. So attack gets us up to this maximum point, this maximum value, but decay specifies how long it takes to get to the sustain level. Now I have to turn the sustain to something other than full, because if sustain's at full, there is no decay. You don't have a decay phase if your sustain's at maximum, because what we're saying is that we're gonna spend this amount of time getting down to this position. Well, if the sustain's at maximum, there's nowhere to go to. So we'll set all of these to 12 o'clock and just have a listen to what it sounds like. Filter coming in, filter going back out, filter stabilizing at the sustain level. Let's adjust our sustain level a little bit. There we go. Let's make our decay phase slightly longer and try again. Attack, decay, slower decay this time, settling down at our resting point of our sustain level. Increase the modulation, it's going to bring more frequencies back in. Decrease the modulation, it's going to take them back out again. So it's quite a complex relationship between these various controls and they're all interlinked, they're all connected together. Starting frequency, length of time it takes to get to an imagined maximum value. What is that maximum value? Amount of time it takes to get down to a secondary static value that's held for as long as the key's down. What is that sustained level when we're holding a key? So we have to connect all of these pieces together to get an idea or an impression of what the filter envelope is gonna do. Finally, we have one stage to look at, which is release. And that's what happens when we let go of the key. Now at the moment, as soon as we let go of the key, the sound stops entirely. Because in addition to the filter having an envelope, the, the volume, the amplitude of the sound itself also has an envelope. And that's immediately below. And this is called the loudness envelope. And hopefully by now, we completely understand how that's gonna work. This is how long the sound takes to get to its loudest value. This is how long it takes to decay down to this level. And this is how long the sound takes to fade away. And now that we've done that to the volume, we can also introduce a filter release. So as the sound is fading away in volume, it's also gonna have its filter cutoff pulled back. Let's hit all of that all in one go. Attack, decay, there's our sustain, which is quieter than it used to be. And then when I let go of the key, the sound fades away naturally thanks to the loudness envelope. And we also get an attenuation of the filter cutoff thanks to the filter envelope. So those two envelopes are working perfectly in harmony with each other. The last feature we need to talk about today, as far as the filter's concerned, is tracking. To demonstrate tracking, what I've done is set up a really simple sound. I've taken the envelopes back out of the situation. I've got no resonance. 
and I've set my frequency and modulation to halfway, which basically means we've got some filtering being applied to the sound. I'm playing a C1 here, and you can see there's my filter shape. If I engage tracking, we get a filter that's centered on the key that's just been pressed. So there's my C1, and there's my C1 without tracking. Now as I go up the keyboard, each time I increase by an octave, the, the tracking is going to literally follow the note that's been played and apply a filter that has a cutoff that's adjusted to be more sympathetic with the note that I've played. So as I go up the keyboard, the filtering gets brighter and brighter. And that's the filter bank with hidden added bonus envelope section dealt with. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. Hope to see you for the next video. Thanks for watching.